welcome to a history of saps, blackjacks, and slung shots with yet more information about the Native American Slung Shot War Club. Apologies for the picture quality. Some of them are not going to be that great, but I only had so many shots I could get. Just a good excuse to talk about these some more. And just around the time I saw this one, I came across another interesting tidbit about them in my research. Uh, so they come together to form this video. We're looking at a Blackfoot Confederacy slung shot. And notice the connection here. It's different than the ones I've shown before. It's not rope, it's not bands of leather, and it's not kind of that hide that's stitched like longitudinally. It really is like the sack itself of, of skin of animal hide is just kind of brought down and keeps wrapping around the shaft. I'm not saying there isn't an actual slit and stitching there. There probably has to be, but it looks that way, and that's how the original literature describes them as appearing a lot. You know, I'm still taken aback by just how it looks. It doesn't look like it would work in a way, but it did. It was relied on in life and death struggles uh, for generations. But I love it, just that the real thin rod, that tiny little wobbly connection, and then the large stone. As you know, probably, uh, from other videos, if nothing else, uh, stone war clubs were, of course, very popular with Native American warriors, but they're usually lashed, right? The stone would be lashed to the wooden shaft, so it's fixed in place. Well, there's a danger with that, which is that eventually, or maybe even the first time, if you're really unlucky, that can break, right? There's no yield whatsoever. So what this design allows you to do is still strike with the stone load while negating the possibility of that breakage because the energy from the strike is dissipated as the stone just wobbles backwards, kind of flops around after impact. Maybe I should have realized that before, but I'll be honest, I didn't. You know, the English versions of this kind of weapon, I shouldn't say versions, but the kind of the kindred weapons that they were using in England at the exact same time that some, uh, you know, law enforcement were using were, I'm very certain, not about resisting a breakage like that. It was really about getting that extra pop from the swing. So I kind of felt naturally that was what was happening here too, and maybe that's more of a benefit to the design that's about preventing breakage, or maybe they're both equally important in the original design, or the opposite, you know, it was about the extra power and then it just happened to help you. It doesn't matter really, it, it functions the way it does. Now let's talk about the Blackfoot briefly, since that specimen is from them. Here's a Blackfoot man and woman on the move. And as you can see that picture, they were a Plains tribe. This is mostly in Canada and the northern what would be United States. So they uh, followed the buffalo herds once horses were brought in, just like so many other nations and tribes that kind of changed their lifestyle once they had the horses. And there's a piece of a village, and doesn't that look great? The horse also let them expand their territory through conquest, which they did. So implements like this one here, which we're looking at the bottom of, uh, would have been used in those wars. You can see this one's not as highly decorated as some of the other specimens we've seen, uh, and I don't know if it had coloration that has just lost to time. But it still looks great, and there it is, the Blackfoot Slungshot War Club. Only the fourth specimen that I've ever seen in person. Thanks.